Hello everyone, welcome back to the channel. It's Adam Rattler with Adam So Fun, and we are continuing along with the Mary Beth Stitch Along. Um, this design is from Talene Jeffrey of Lady Jane Quilter, available at Quiltable. Uh, use the link below, and don't forget to use my discount code ASF10, like Adam So Fun, ASF10, to save you an additional 10% off there. Uh, but before we get into everything, I'm Adam. I'm Adam So Fun. This is my channel. If you're new here, don't forget to like, subscribe, and hit that bell icon so you're notified when new videos drop. I try to do a new video every Friday. There's techniques and tips and tricks and just me being crazy. I like to do long arm stuff, pro stitcher stuff. If you're familiar with Handy Quilter or if you're looking for a long arm, you can see what they can do. Um, I'm always happy to answer questions too, so you can always reach out. Uh, don't forget to follow me on social media, Adam So Fun with an S-E-W on Facebook and Instagram where you see a lot of other stuff that doesn't hit the channel or you see it before it hits the channel. So I um, started this stitch out. Uh, I actually did it three days ago. I was all excited and then the last two days I just got really busy and I haven't been able to finish. So we're going to finish this recording but I started, I showed some pictures and the funny thing, Talene was actually stitching the same pattern out on the same day. She's over in South Africa and um, we just happened to be doing it the same day. So I posted pictures and she also posted pictures so that was kind of cool. She's finished hers and done another one and I'm still Hey, I'm still going. But um, in where we left off in the last video, so video one, we loaded the quilt, we talked about batting, we talked about threads, we basted the quilt in a grid pattern, a little bit different than how I usually baste. Um, so that was uh, number one. In video two, we started stitching out the pattern. Um, it is stitched out and I'm to the point where I can't stitch anymore, I need to advance. So at the end of that day, I stopped with my needle down where my center point was, like where my start point was, really. I um, found my start point, I stopped needle down, and I saved my workspace because I want to bring everything back up and just realign it pretty easily. Uh, we'll do that up close, but um, today we're going to continue stitching this design. We're going to finish stitching out the whole design, and then in the last video, we're going to add some details to it by stitching really densely. And I'm actually, I'm going to be using Magnifico thread for this. This is color uh, 2061 uh, of Magnifico. This is from Superior Threads. Remember, if you're shopping superiorthreads.com, you can use my ASF10 discount code and save you 10% uh, off there. Um, but this is a yellow. We're going to stitch very dense really tiny stipple or scribble or something. We're just gonna lay down a lot of thread and it's going to change the color of the, per the perceived color of this fabric because there's gonna be so much thread. We're basically gonna thread paint sections of this to make other sections pop. Um, I did just go to the Long Beach Quilt Show yesterday, which is why I didn't get to film. And it was the International Quilt Festival Long Beach. So in case you're wondering, it's the beginning of August depending on when you watch this. Um, and I bought another one. So I'm gonna be running two threads through the same needle. Yes, you can do it. Yes, it's not hard. Um, if you have a Moxie that only has one holder for your thread, you probably can't do it because you can't get two threads on there. You'd have to devise your own way to get two thread stands on there and I just, I was trying to think about it the other day. I don't know how you would do it. So I think you're just going to be off. You're ha going to have to use one. It's still accomplishable with one, but we're going to use two because it's going to put double the thread down and brighten that, that, those colors up. But that won't be until the next video. In this one, I'm stitching a matching color. So I'm stitching in green. So, um, let's see. I don't know if there's anything else to say. I'm going to get a drink of water. We're going to move you close. We're going to get back into this. We're going to talk about how to reposition, especially now that, um, I've come back two days later to finish this. So we'll see you here in a second. All right, so I just booted up. All my settings are the same. I'm gonna tap that off. Uh, I'm stitching a regulated 12 stitches per inch. I have my crews at 175 because that's what we should do when we have pro stitcher running. My um, needle is stopping up because pro stitcher is running so it's gonna default stop it up. Uh, my tension is at 13. That is machine specific. So don't say, oh, Adam has his at 13. I need to change mine to 13. All the machines are different. Um, as you can see, I'm going to tilt you down. My needle is down. Let me turn those lights off so we can see some stuff. So my needle is down. 
when I ended the day last time, I stuck my laser light right at the beginning of the very first stitch, the starting point of the whole program. I shut it down and I didn't move the machine. It's been needled down for two days because like I said, I'm just coming back. So I know where the start point of this is. I haven't moved anything yet. So we're gonna come back up to my screen. And my first step is I need to open my design. So I am using that Mary Beth design, but I did save that design as a workspace. And one of the advantages of saving it as a workspace, if I go design open, I have all of these designs in here. That's on my drive. Those are areas, but I have all of these designs. So if I don't pay attention to where I save it, it's going to be somewhere in here. I just am not sure where. So I'm going to hit cancel. If I try to open a workspace, there's nothing here because my pro stitcher is looking for a workspace file, not a design file. So if I go to Anne Bright, there's no designs here. Or if I go to Diane Henry, there's no designs here because it's only working, looking for a workspace. I think I saved, I don't even remember where I saved the workspace. That's bad. Uh, oh, I saved it on my drive. That's why. Um, so these are where I save all my workspaces. This is my um, my drive. So this is my personal drive that I have here. And here's my Mary Beth workspace. So I can select it and hit open. And now my workspace is open. But remember, every time we boot up Pro Stitcher, it has a new center. I call it the sun of that universe as is moved. Every time you boot up Pro Stitcher, it is where wherever your needle is at that point. So because I stopped needle down and I know that my crosshairs are on the start point of my design, I'm gonna come up to modify, reposition, and I'm just gonna hit this start point button and you're gonna watch everything shift so that start point is right where my needle is. So now I've lined everything back up to where it was when I ended the day two days ago. So this is how to line things back up. Remember, when you boot things up and when we're in Pro Stitcher, we bring things to our crosshairs. We don't try to chase it because we always can take the needle, which is our crosshairs. I'm gonna needle up now because I've moved it. Um, as I move, my crosshairs move, right? We know that. So if we just have to remember that if I had a block, and I'm gonna just go into this really quick. If I had a block, that is this stitched out square right here, and I put my needle or my put my crosshairs right on that corner of that square, I know that the needle's in the correct place. If I come back up and look at my screen and I have the design over here, the needle's in the right place. We need to move the design to the needle. So in Pro Stitcher, we bring things to us. We are the, the god of Pro Stitcher. So now that everything's lined up, I could check a few points if I want to. I'll put a, my crosshairs there and it's right there on that basket weave. Perfect. I can put, um, maybe there's a point on that leaf. Perfect. On that petal. Perfect. Um, so and I'll show you. I'm at that point on this petal right here. And if I zoom in, I'm at the point on the petal on my screen. So that's how to check if you're ever, if everything's lining up okay. Oh, I really love, I'm loving this new camera. I can zoom in, you can see, I love that. So now I'm ready to advance. So I'm gonna move you back a little bit. I'm gonna zoom all the way out and move you back. So I'm ready to advance this and we're gonna do the needle down method because that's gonna be more accurate than anything else. So I usually, if you've watched any of my advancing drag and drop without the needle down videos, that's how I usually advance unless I want to be accurate and I'm doing something that has to be pretty precise. Um, so on my screen, I've stitched basically everything up to the feathers. So I still need to do these three outside designs. I want to do these outside pieces before I um, bring the quilt and do the bottom half because I might as well finish the top half while I'm here and then I can come back and do the rest as I go down because I could add in um, these pieces on the sides here and these angled pieces here and then move the rest and do the last two angled, the last basket weaves and do everything at the bottom in one shot. So I am going to 
come somewhere to the center. Oops, I just kicked the camera. I'm coming to the somewhere to the center of my quilt. I'm gonna cross the camera, sorry. I'm moving somewhere to the center of my quilt that I know that isn't higher than the lowest point. So these, this circle comes all the way down to the bottom of my feathers. So I'm gonna come to about here on my basket weave. You, with your machine and your throat, you might have to get a little bit closer. Um, I have a larger throat, so I'm okay. And I'm going to needle down. There's my first step. I haven't done anything. I still have my side clamps on. I haven't undone any ratchets. Needle down is that first step. Now I can go through the process of advancing. So I'm gonna take off my side clamps. I am using my um, so tight magnet side clamps. Oops. It clamps so good that it ripped part of my batting. Um, so this is, uh, again, a Barb Tatera uh, invention. It was her idea and I ran with it after I told her I'm gonna steal it. So um, they're so tight magnets in here. I use the heavy duty magnets. This is a so tight magnet. I think you can see it probably maybe there. Um, and this is the original. Inside of this is heavy duty, but they're little magnets. You get a backing piece. There is a video on how to make these. I'll link it below. And then they magnetic snap. And I use this on the side of my quilt and then my clamps clamp to the side of this. So um, I call it a side leader. So when I have my ruler base on, my ruler base doesn't hit those clamps. I use the ruler base a lot. So these are my side leaders. Again, there's a video, I will link it. Um, if you're shopping at Sew Tights, you can use my ASF code there. You save 15%. I'm saving you money everywhere. Um, if you haven't, I've also loaded quilts with the sew tight magnets, with the magnum ones. When I advance, I'll grab one just so I can show you. And there's videos, there's videos on everything. You know me, I make a video for everything. So now that my needle's down, first step, very important, is dropping your needle. Second step, we're coming up and I'm gonna hit drag. It turns green and says drop. Um, you can also find this under modify reposition over on our sidebar, drag, it now says drop. This button and this button do the same thing, but it is in your quick access tools by default. Now, once you have drop on, anything we do is gonna move this quilt top. So this will record all of those movements if that machine moves. So now I'm gonna take my side clamps off. and I will undo my clamps and I'm going to advance the quilt. I'm gonna anti-advance. I'm gonna actually gonna bring it towards us instead of away from us because we wanna stitch those top pieces. And I'm gonna go slow because I do have a needle down in my quilt. So let me get over there and do that. So I'm unlocking the ratchet on the back bar. I will turn my belly bar. Lock my back bar ratchet and tighten my top up. Once the top is tightened, I'm going to do my side clamps again. And now I'm to the point where everything is tight and loaded and I'm ready to stitch out. And you don't do this step until you get to that point, until you're ready. If I could say run, I could, I could push the button now. I'm finally going to hit drop because I don't want that to move anymore. Because what the dra drag and drop does, if you hit drag, it turns green and says drop. Anytime the machine moves, your design moves along with it. You could have seen that on the screen as, um, as I was moving that quilt. Now I'm going to another, another very important thing, needle up because my needle was down. And now I can move the design or move my machine. The design stays still and I'm ready to stitch those other parts. One more thing I like to do. I wonder how close you are. Can you see this? So, um, I'm going to pick some points. I have two really nice points right here on, on the left and right. I'm going to put my needle at one of those points 
and see if I still line up on the screen. I can zoom in and that is pretty good. I mean, it might be off one stitch. So I'm gonna say that's good. I'm gonna move it over to the other side too and check. Perfect, again, maybe one stitch. So now I know that I'm good to stitch because everything's lined up. The next thing I want to do is I want to move my machine all the way to the back because I need to stitch these three tall pieces and I wanna make sure it fits in my throat. So I'm gonna move the machine to the back and I'm fine, it's fitting in my throat and it's stitching on my uh, quilt top. I had Mich Michelle message me or uh, put a comment on Facebook and said, oh my gosh, I'm so nervous. You don't have any extra room on that quilt. I have a good solid uh, inch and a half all the way around. So I'm gonna be okay, I'm not worried about it. So now I just have to stitch out those last three sections. I will refer back to my stitch out because I looked at it two days ago and that was two days ago. So I don't really remember what it looks like. So um, we're going to our pro stitcher tab, new start end in the ribbon. We're going to use that sidebar. It's our best friend. We are going to change the end point all the way to the end. It's already there. And then we, we need to move the start point. So I could hold this down and take forever and a day to move that start point. It's just barely moving. I can hold my arrows here. It goes a little bit faster. You can see that start point kind of running through the design. But best, I can take my jumps. And I know that these are the last three jumps. So I might take my jump all the way to the very end. Actually, I can scroll it all the way to the end and jump up three. So um, the start and the stop on this design are on these pieces are right on top of each other. So I'm going to hit this up jump. You're going to see this number move, but you're not going to see anything happen on the screen. So it went to 4754. It was at 5011. But that start button, that stop or the start point never moved because the start and the stop are on the same place. So that's this piece right here that I just jumped up to. Now I'm going to move my jump up one more. So that's this piece over here. And now I can move my jump up one more and that's this piece on the right. So what's gonna happen is we're gonna stitch the right piece, the left piece, and then the top piece. So let's go stitch that out. All right, so that was moving it. Um, wouldn't you know, a thunderstorm started in the middle of this stitching out, like in the last five minutes. Thunder, lightning, I'm shutting everything down because I don't leave it on. So um, we'll see you back in a different outfit whenever the storm stops, probably back tomorrow. All right, the thunderstorm is over. We are back. Um, everything is stitched up to the top. So we know that we've stitched from here up. Um, I haven't stitched these pieces on the sides here and here. Let me zoom in to the screen so you can see what I'm talking about. There we are. So we haven't stitched this piece or this piece, but we do have these angled pieces. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to advance. I want to stitch this section out because I would like to stitch this and this, which means I need the piece pointing up and the piece pointing down. So we're going to have to see if both of those are going to fit in there. And then, um, cause I can, stitch these two pieces pointing down the stuff in the center which would be the cross hatch the feathers the outside pieces and then when i go to the bottom i just have these last two uh, center mark pieces and then i'll have the last kind of section out here and i might be able to get all of that in my throat um, i might be just shy an inch or so which is what happened up here but we just need to advance again so um, just like we did before i'm going to needle down advance this this time I want to stitch basically where the horizontal orange line is, is where I want the machine all the way up against that back bar because I want to stitch the areas that are this. I want to stitch this piece and this gives me um, maybe a half inch or so 
into that um, into that piece. So I'm gonna find a point. I always do something in the middle. Um, I can come to this point, but let me zoom out and see what I like. If I use that point, I'm really close to the top of this design. So I'm going to zoom back into this one. We'll pr just move it up. We're gonna use this point. And that should line up with what's on my quilt, and it does. So I'm going to needle down. That was step one. Step two, I'm gonna hit drag. It will turn to drop. And now I can do all my advancing. I'm gonna take off my side clamps. I'm going to advance. I'll take it all the way to the back bar, put uh, side clamps on, tighten everything up, or tighten everything up, side clamps on, and then I can come and stop this. So let me do that really quick. Remember, I'm moving the machine. If you watch the screen, you'll see everything move. But I'm moving the machine, so I'm gonna go slow. All right, so nothing's in focus or in view anymore because I moved everything. But there we can see that I'm advanced. My back bar is almost, or the uh, back of my machine is almost hitting that bar. It's up a few clicks uh, because I didn't take it all the way. So now um, I'm gonna make sure my top is tight. It looks good. I'm gonna put my side clamps on. And now that everything is ready, my top is tight. If I were ready to stitch, I could just hit go. I'm going to hit drop. Oops. And then the last step is to needle up. Now I'm needled up. I will do a few things. I like to run a check. So I'm gonna move my machine to a point. We'll just use a point in this. Uh, you can't, oh yeah, you can. Um, in this leaf here or this little pedal piece and make sure that it lines up on my screen and it lines up perfect. And I'll show you that my crosshairs line up at that point. So now I know that everything's lined up and I can get ready to stitch the next section. I'm gonna move you closer really quick. So now, I'll zoom this out. I need to stitch, well first, I'm gonna bring my machine all the way towards me, and zoom out, move you, because I wanna see how much of this design I can stitch out for this section. Um, I actually can stitch the pieces that are pointing down, because this point and this point are part of that center piece. So I think I'm gonna stitch the rest of those because I have room because, so I'm gonna stitch one, two, three, four, and then I can come back in. I can stitch um, the, uh, let's see, what are these? Uh, basket weave, basket weave, basket weave, basket weave, or cross hatch, um, feather, 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 outside pieces, and then I'll come and do the last feathers and outside pieces and last basket weave whenever I get down there. It stitched one, two, three, four. It's gonna come stitch this piece. And I know that it stitches that bottom line first. So I'm gonna move my machine because I have to move to pick up that uh, point. Let me zoom you in. Too far. Um, so this is, this is where it's gonna start stitching this piece and it's gonna stitch one, two, three, four, I think. So I'm gonna go to my Pro Stitcher tab. New start end in the ribbon because remember, uh, files ribbon sidebar. I'm gonna change my start point auto auto to turn it on and turn it off and then I can move that up I wonder if I can do that jump I can because it so now we're gonna come over to this one next to it because it's gonna stitch to the right to the left to the left to the right and when it stitches these it does the the left point of the point first so I'm gonna come down to here Pro Stitcher tab, new start end. I'm gonna change that end point, auto, auto, and I can move that jump down. It's gonna to go to the end of that design. There we are. 
So now I've just told it to stitch basically one, two, three, four, and stitch those out. So let's stitch those out and we'll come back. Because this is, this is kind of like we did at the beginning. We're just going to pick the pieces we want and stitch them out. So I'll zoom you out so you can watch. All right, so now we have the total center medallion section stitched. So now we need to move over to that basket weave. All right, so this design um, for the basket weave, because we're going to start filling in the basket weave. It starts at the bottom and then it goes to the right, to the left. I think the left to the right or right to left, whatever, and then does the top three. We've already done all of this stuff up top. So I don't want it to start at this bottom one because that doesn't fit into our throat. So if I zoom, and let's turn our jumps on. We're going to see all those things. It looks like a, a big old mess, but we can see there's a dash line from this point to that point. And that is the end of the down basket weave to the beginning of the side basket weave. So I am going to move my machine and let me zoom you out a little bit so we can see this. Because I have to move my machine to over to where this would be the start point. And it's going to be somewhere right there. I can move my screen a little bit and we'll zoom you back in and you'll see what I'm what I'm talking about because this is the start point of the basket weave on the right so I'm gonna go to my pro stitcher tab new start end auto auto to move that start point I can zoom in and I want to put my jump back to this so I'm gonna push the up jump and it's gonna move me this is this first point in the basket weave on the right and then it's going to bing, bong, boom. And then I can see if I zoom into here, there's a dash line from there to here. So I'm going to move up to that point. Do, I'll zoom in, end, auto, auto. So I moved my end point and I want to put the end point right there. So I'm going to push that jump down or I have umps. You might have umps too. Oh, you can't really see the screen all the way. Um, I talked about this in another video. I have umps that just is because the side of my screen isn't wide enough and that's okay. I know that that means jumps. So now basically I told Pro Stitcher, I'm going to turn those jumps off so they're not confusing. I want you to start at this one, stitch this one. It will, it will come over here. It's not going to jump that itself because I like to do my tie offs, but it will jump between each line. Then it's going to stitch this one. Then we'll jump it to start this one and then we'll jump it over and stitch this one. So I will point you down and you can enjoy the stitch out. Well, I totally forgot to turn the camera on. So uh, basket weaves are done and now we have our next pieces we need to stitch out. Let me bring the machine close to us. Bottom house refresh, turn off those jumps so we can see what we're doing. And we need to do the feathers and the feathers are going to start here and it's going to do feather, 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 feather. And those are the only four I want right now. So if I zoom in and I'm going to move my machine over to a feather, we'll just move the camera with it. And we know it's going to start on that one. So we'll move right there. Perfect. I'm just going to go to my pro stitcher tab, new start end, and I'm going to move both my start and my end point to the same place. Um, and that is because I know that I want to start on this one. So I'm going to move my, I hit the auto. So I'll start and end are on the same place. I'm going to use my up jump so I can have my master start there. We want to stitch one. I'm going to use my end point down jump. So there's the end of that feather, the end of the second feather. If I come over here, I'm going to hit down jump, the end of the third feather the end of the fourth feather. So now it's just gonna stitch those four feathers and then we can come back and stitch those um, last two pieces. I'm gonna do the same thing, move my start and my end point, my start and my end point and stitch those ones. So I'm gonna finish stitching these four things. I'll just leave the camera running. I'm not gonna come in and show you how to move all those starts and ends. Um, I'll probably just leave the camera running for the rest of the time so you can see it stitch because once we do that, I'm just gonna needle down, advance, you've already seen it done twice. And then I'm gonna stitch the final, uh, I'll do the final um, basket weave, 
the final six feathers, the final three pieces at the end, and this baby will be done. So I'm just gonna sit, sit you back and we'll throw some music on. All right, everyone, now that we have everything stitched out, we are done. I mean, you could end this here. If you had a whole cloth quilt, um, maybe you had one of Deborah Linker's uh, hand dyes, um, you'd be done. This is it. I mean, you could you could finish here. I could finish here too. We're gonna go in, we're gonna add more detail. We're gonna make this uh, stunning piece even pop more, um, be able to customize it. So that's what we're gonna go in in the next video. We are going to be stitching with Magnifico. This is 2061. Um, I'm actually gonna use both of them. We're gonna run two threads through the needle because I wanna stitch. I wanna lay a ton of thread. Basically, we're gonna kind of micro stitch and thread paint at the same time. So we can go in and we can change the colors of some of this. So in this feathers, there's a little bit of background area around the feather. We're gonna go fill that in. We're gonna do some fills down here. We're just gonna really make this thing we're gonna change it up by using thread. So thread play, it's all about thread play here. But before that, I have to get all of my basting stitches out. I'm gonna pop these out now because if I go in and stitch 22 stitches per inch or something, over those uh, basting stitches, they're never going to come out. So um, that's where my little clover, my cl curved clover all comes in. Um, if you don't have one of these, it is great. This, especially under your basting stitches. I'll do something in the middle. Um, oh, let me zoom you in. We'll just bring you close. I guess I can just zoom you in. So how this is going to work, I'm gonna try to do it so I'm not in front of the camera. It has a cur, let me see, there we are. This is the clover. There's the curved all part. So it's a blunt curved tip. I can't reach far enough and see what's, if it's in the camera. Clover curved all. Um, how this works, I use it to pick up my stitch and then I go with my, my scissors. These are the handy quilter scissors. They're curved, so I know I'm not gonna cut my quilt. And I'm gonna snip that top. Now scissors go here, and I can just come and slide under. Look how easy these stitches are coming out. Uh, there is still a bobbin down there, so once I get these stitches up, I might, if you pull, there's my bobbin, because it's still connected down there. Now I can just trim that bobbin, and this, because it's that uh, Magnifico thread, the, the type of thread it is, the trilobal poly, it's slippery. So this is just gonna pull out really easy. I can pull my bobbin out too. 
<laughs> Alright, so that's gonna be it for this video. Um, like I said, you could end here if you want. You're gonna realize that this is so easy. You're gonna wanna make a bunch of them. Uh, especially, like I said, this is not an inexpensive pattern, but once you have it, like, send out gifts. You could stitch this. What if it was, um, you had a red, a red backing or a green backing and you use gold metallic thread or red or like a red with a silver and you stitch this out in metallic thread. Um, how pretty would that be to send to someone for a Christmas gift? Super easy, done in a day. You know, shrink it to 40 by 40. You don't even have to make a backing. Just with the fabric, with the fabric. Michelle was very worried that I wasn't gonna have any space. I said, hey, I have a good inch and a half on it all sides. I am perfect. This is great. Um, I'm so excited on how it turned out. And uh, more importantly, it's pretty easy. It really is. So um, as always, please like, subscribe to the channel, hit the bell icon so you're notified when those new videos drop because um, I do try to put a new video out every Friday. Also follow me on social media, Adam So Fun with an S-E-W on Facebook and Instagram where you see a lot of other things. You would have already seen this uh, picture of this because I just took one and I was so excited I'm going to put it on uh, Facebook. Um, I might even make a TikTok video. Who knows? And, you know, at the end of the day, it's just quilting. We want to laugh. We want to have a good time. Make sure you look in the comments for all of the links associated with this. You can find the link to the curved all. I'll link the scissors, whatever. I'll link it all. But um, we'll see you in the next video when we start our thread painting. Bye, everybody.